Welcome home, crafty one. The following story is on the Silva case. But as usual, you get the insight from the forger. Who else could bring you this exclusive? Only a local or a native of the area could tell you these stories. And so here we have it here today. An update on the Silva case. But with a... Twist. Dernière heure. Si vous villerez à Montréal tôt ce matin et oui. on craindrait pour sa vie. Hein. Oui, autour de 8h20, dans la dernière heure. Là, je veux vous montrer, image en direct, vous voyez, imposant périmètre policier à ce moment-ci. On est sabre et Tillman dans le secteur de Villeray. Euh, on voit très bien les impacts d'ailleurs de balles euh, sur la, la vitre comme telle du côté conducteur euh, du véhicule euh, près duquel ou dans lequel prenait place euh, la victime, l'homme en question. Et je suis en compagnie de Jean-Pierre Brabant là, pour avoir les derniers détails. Euh, Dites-moi, M. Brabant, qu'est-ce que l'on sait sur cet événement? Ça se passe bon autour de 8h20. C'est un secteur résidentiel ici en plein jour. Effectivement, vers 8h20, il y a eu des appels au 911 qui ont été logés pour des coups de feu qui ont été entendus sur la rue Fabre. Alors, à l'arrivée des policiers, ils ont localisé un homme dans la cinquantaine qui avait été atteint d'au moins un projectile au haut du corps. Alors, celui-ci a été transporté dans un centre hospitalier où, pour le moment, on craint pour sa vie au centre hospitalier. Alors, un périmètre qui a été érigé, les enquêteurs qui sont sur les lieux là pour euh, tenter de comprendre les circonstances entourant la tentative de meurtre. Ils vont faire du porte-à-porte, -porte, mais pour le moment, aucune arrestation. La seule information qu'on a, c'est au moins un homme qui a rapproché la victime a refait feu à une, une reprise en sa direction avant de quitter à pied dans une direction inconnue. Voilà. Qu'est-ce que l'on sait sur, sur le tireur, le suspect en question? Euh, on n'a pas de description comme telle pour le moment. Il y avait des témoins, là, par contre. Il y a des gens qui sont à être en vous l'avez mentionné, dans un quartier résidentiel, ici, il y a des témoins qui ont vu euh, le suspect quitter à pied, comme je mentionnais, dans une direction inconnue pour le moment. Il y a du porte-à-porte -porte qui va être fait au cours des prochaines... I had to slow down, or I would have run him over. He stopped next to Lewis's BMW and was at the height of the driver's window. When he raised his arm, he shot toward the window. I can't say how many meters away I was, but I almost ran him over. At first, I didn't believe it, but when I headed to the BMW, I noticed the bullet holes. She had seen the shooter from five meters. You see, seemingly, it was over. It seemed the shooter got away. But there was another man who resided on Fabre Street, and he could have been in the office that day, but the pandemic's work from home was at play. I was looking at my computer and looking at emails. I started to work a little bit, and then I heard five very loud shots. It sounded like someone had a metal rod and was banging on a metal with it, the man said, adding he first assumed the sounds were related to how it was a recycling day in his burrow. But then I thought, those sounds aren't normal, and I looked out the window. The witness then told the jury, He saw a black car speed away from the scene of the shooting, but he was not sure it was the same black car that he had seen slow down on Fabre Street. He could hear the tires squeal and the engine rev before it disappeared. I was coming out the corner store. I heard crying. In 10 seconds, everyone rushed the car. Everything happened real fast. Witnessed a young man from the sector who revealed anonymously, I walked up and I saw the woman crying, and so I couldn't even look. Indeed, this was the scene of a ghastly crime. Cold-blooded murder. No mercy was shown to the family that was left to mourn. France, Louis, will there ever be justice for the wife who was left to watch her husband die in her arms at the hospital? Now we need to go back to 2003 to 2006. J'ai des choses à dire, puis le monde sont prêts à l'entendre. Je vais nous mettre des bâtons dans les coups. 
comprends ce que je veux dire, je suis pas les vidéos quand elles sont allées retirer les vidéos de Ken. On s'en fout qui est, qu est dans son vidéo. On ne pas les vidéos qui sont la musique. Tu hein? comprends ce que je veux dire? Now, what you need to know. In that era, 2003 to 2006, there was a controversial topic at point. How to create a thriving hip-hop economy within Quebec. And the most were not happy with the current situation. To summarize it for you, they were not happy with the way they weren't getting the push from the local media network. And as we know on my channel, I don't mince words. I like to tell the truth and say it how it is. There was a lot of gatekeeping. You've been following my channel, and so you know what I mean. But to be fair, rapping about guns and drugs, that's a hard sell on mainstream television in Quebec. Or at least, we haven't arrived to that level yet. Beat. Sacha Nelson César Cash La musique plus petite, on va retirer les vidéos Je trouve ça insensé, c'est de la musique Quand Eric Lapointe s'est fait prendre avec l'héroïne au Mexique On n'a pas fait ça, on n'a pas boycotté ses albums Quand telle autre personne s'est fait arrêter pour telle chose On n'a pas boycotté leur album, pourquoi? Kashim grew to become a street legend And the footage you see before you is when he was a progress at work. As it testifies, he was featured in a documentary about the Montreal hip-hop scene. And in the previous scene, it showed you Kashim speaking about when one of the music videos from King was removed from the airwaves because it featured in the background various leaders of the Blood Gang. Le fait que quelqu'un, peu importe que ce soit la police, que ce soit les amuse-plus, on va retirer les vidéos. Je trouve ça insensé, c'est de la musique. Quand Eric Lapointe s'est fait prendre avec l'héroïne au Mexique, on n'a pas fait ça, on n'a pas boycotté ses albums. Quand telle autre personne s'est fait arrêter pour telle chose, on n'a pas boycotté leur album. Pourquoi lui? Quand Shahid est venu pour venir m'interviewer, son boss lui a dit non parce que les pop ici au Québec a trop de. Comment il a dit ça encore? C'est trop négatif, alors faut pas rendre la chose encore plus négative. He goes home at the end of the day, you know what I mean? So, let's work this music. Impliquez-vous dans quelque chose, man. Parce que dans le hip-hop, il y a de l'aspect, il y, la, y a pas l'aspect musical seulement. Il y a, y a l'aspect business. Tu peux prendre soin d'une maison de production, tu peux faire, tu peux, tu, tu peux, tu peux ouvrir des, 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 pour dupliquer les CD. Tu peux, tu peux, tu peux devenir manager, tu peux faire des spectacles, comme, comme, comme les gars de Grand Up, ils font, tu peux faire des DVD. Yo! Il y a plein de choses que tu peux faire. Puis le plus que tu fais, le plus que ça ouvre des portes à tout le monde pour comprendre qu'on peut tout manger là-dedans. Tu comprends ce que je veux dire? Il y a même les shootings. Yo, there's a whole lot to do, man. Faut arrêter de niaiser et penser que yo, la maison de disque va régler ça. Moi, même moi, c'est Shing avec une maison de disque. The best to know. Je duplicate mon own shit and I'm selling out the chunk of my car. We gotta change Montreal. You know what I mean? Cash was murdered as he left his home on December 1st, 2020. By now, you've surely heard of Andrew Scopa, or the Scopa Brothers. And I've also shown you Blood, Mumpoint, Arsène, meeting up with him. And we have covered in the Scopa files. Andrew was a big supplier of heroin. And so, what you need to know, Sasha or Cash was suspected of dealing heroin. Where do you think he got that from? In the last few years, much of the action was in the streets of Montreal, 
in an eerie twist of fate because the sons of Duplessis have killed ex-rockers and their deaths would be unsolved. But we had a new turncoat. Frédéric Silva will probably be the biggest or second biggest ex-hitman from Quebec turned informant. And he is Gregory's worst nightmare. Tire le gars, puis jette l'arme, said Frédéric Silva. C'est réglé à 90%. Ça se fera par mes jeunes. This conversation was relayed by Frédéric Silva, and it occurred with none other than Cash. After his arrest in February of 2019, Silva was incarcerated at the Bordeaux prison and he had access to a cell phone in which he admitted to having given one contract for murder. And it was none other than Franz Louis. You see, the mob had subcontracted part of their activities. Franz was involved in a loan sharking operation or gambling or simply extortion but that scheme went bust and they were cleaning house after years of benefiting from the underworld it was time for france louis to say goodbye the game of musical chairs reaps its next victim but as often is the case the one lifting the chair shall be the one to sit on it someday In November of 2020, France was killed for a sum of $100,000. Frédéric Silva also says he furnished two weapons to Nelson César, who was supposed to use that AR-15 or an M4 or a 9mm in case the first jammed. And the police asks him, why, why would you use an assault rifle? To which Silva replied, I wanted to leave a big message to everyone. But weren't you not worried about hitting innocent victims, the cops asked? No, because it was in his car. I told myself, if the guys do a good work, they're not supposed to be touching anyone else. It's a residential sector, but if the guy shoots him in his car, usually the bullets don't exit that vehicle. Monsieur Frédéric Silva, tell us, did Cash actually use those firearms? Well, I told him, shoot the guy, then throw the damn thing. I want to be able to see it in the news. I wanted it next to the car, but I didn't see it. Did he actually use it? I don't even know. Then Monsieur Silva, tell us, in that environment, what impact does it have to kill someone? with a long arm rather than a handgun. See, you're attacking killers, so that now you are doing it at a higher level. It shows that you have a damn good team behind you, and so I feel that you'll shake them up more. But on November 19, Silva notices the television reminds Silva that the task was accomplished. Then he communicates with Cash to let him know he's satisfied, but he doesn't ask the question if he used the guns at all, as requested. Why did you not ask him that? It's because we want to put the subject behind us. You see, as we approach the deadline for payment, we speak about it less and less. And once it's paid for, we throw our phones away and forget all about it. Then Silva pays Nelson César the $100,000. And Nelson César, or cash, he had to pay the others. But there was a spectacular turn of events when the police announced an arrest. Visibly shaken, Silva 
begins to feel that musical chair lift from underneath himself, and he communicates immediately with Cash to demand some explanations, to which Cash explains that it's a friend of a friend who was arrested. And he assures Silva that the actual shooter, he's safe. And so they modify their business arrangement. Silva says they don't usually do this, but he'll throw in $15,000 for the initial court costs for the person who was apprehended, but not a penny more is not part of his own team, but a subcontractor in the same way that these legit temp agencies treat you and I as cattle. Disposables, Silva gets rid of his problem, and somewhere in the back of his mind, the repercussions were starting to settle in. In his mind, he could see the writing on the wall for himself. Silva says, exactly. By respect, I offered to pay the $15,000, but the rest, it's the responsibility of his team. You were paid, then it's up to you to not get caught. And those words become a laughing matter when you consider the fact that it was Frédéric Silva's own mistake. A rather stupid one, highlighting the little man behind that persona. He was dumb enough or too scared to go to a party in NDG without his gun. And so he shot a Concordia University student there at a bar in front of cameras, and then history writes itself.